Welcome to Trista's Plate Story Podcast. I'm your host, Trista Polo. This week, we meet botanical funk artist Ben Robinson of Philadelphia. He creates fun and colorful art on many surfaces, including license plates. We'll hear all about it and see samples of his work on our video version. Audio version, you can check out his Instagram to see all of his awesome creations. We'll hear what inspires Ben in his creative process and how his time at art school influenced his work. Ben will also share how he deals with criticism from the public and what keeps him going no matter what. But first, Plate Story News. Alice Cooper kicked off his tour in Canada this past week. While the tour is not actually named, he has a Detroit Muscle vanity plate on the poster's Mustang artwork. Cooper shared that the car is an artist's depiction of his own car and says, quote, the plate is the fact that in Detroit, it's all about muscle cars and muscle music, so it's making the statement that it's all about hard rock. Cooper's North American tour will go through April 2022. He will then move on to the international portion of his tour. At 73, Cooper is still doing what he loves best, sharing his own art with the world. This week's Plate Story guest listens to hard rock and hip hop when he paints, so he will probably be happy to have some new Alice Cooper to inspire and motivate him on his future projects. Now let's go spend some time with him. Welcome. I'm super excited to have my guest for today, Ben Robinson from Philadelphia. Ben, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Good. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> now, we're veering off our typical pattern because you don't actually have a vanity plate. So tell me, what's your story around plates, license plates? Yeah, so I'm uh, from Philadelphia. do a lot of painting and drawing on all kinds of mediums, honestly. But the license plates kind of kind of fell into them a little bit. So I just thought they were, first of all, I like the old license plates, the one that have like a little character and like, cause a lot of the license plates now are kind of like, kind of dull and dumbed down a little bit. It's kind of like, there's no cool sayings or like pictures or nothing like that. So I think I was in a thrift shop or something and saw like an old collection of something like old vanity plates and just found some Pennsylvania ones. And I was like, this could be a good like surface to, I don't know, like make some funky artwork on and kind of like associate the the state with like some imagery that relates to it. So I just thought it kind of like set up like a good composition and something like different too, because I haven't really seen, I've seen like some license plate artwork, but I was trying to bring like a little something different, you know, just to kind of like incorporate the whole kind of composition that it has. Honestly, I think it's just like a unique, fun thing to paint on, honestly. Yeah, and so you're an artist in Philadelphia, and is this your main medium for art, or is like how do license plates work into the mediums you choose to work in? I wouldn't say it's the main one. It's definitely like one that I enjoy a lot, and probably gets a lot of good feedback out of all the stuff I do. I started with like the traditional kind of like paper canvas, you know, kind of like the traditional artwork route, the typical medium stuff like that. I still do that all the time. As I started doing like more shows and kind of like putting myself out there, I started like experimenting with different surfaces, like you know, like broken skateboards, recycled license plates, like pretty much any like oddball recycled material I could find just to paint on. And then the more that I was doing that the more like the better feedback I was getting I've done it a lot over the years and it's been it's been awesome I love doing them personally that's awesome because I have seen license plates used as part of a medium more for sculpture or to actually use the plate to create like a portrait or exactly. a landscape or a skyscape and you're actually using it as the canvas that you then paint your own work onto how is it as a canvas to use versus other mediums it's a little a little different it's obviously you got like the the lettering you know it's raised up and everything so you got to kind of work around like the 3d elements but that's also like a perk of the surface like you can kind of make it more 3d and like just a different element to it you know what i mean it's not like a flat flat surface so been like experimenting like i use acrylic and enamel on it which pretty much holds up. Like I've had people send me pictures over the years of like year old ones and they hold up. So it obviously, you know, varies from project to project, but 
sometimes I go into things with like a like a very vague idea, like very brief, just kind of like a starting point. And then I kind of build off of that. Like sometimes I use references, but what I like doing the most is just kind of like jumping right in, just kind of like free form kind of doodling. And that kind of like opens up the creative process to kind of like, you know, like doodle a little bit, step back, analyze, see what you have. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like improvising, like spontaneous creation, honestly. But I don't know. I just think that leaves like a lot of room to really like get into the piece you're doing and not like be so confined and like, because when like when you have all these references, like I like doing all that too, but I really like just kind of like figuring it out on the fly and like seeing what comes from what you're doing, you know, and not being like too bound to anything you're putting down on the paper, like not afraid to erase, go over things. But since like the license plates, that like metal kind of whatever surface it is, it's kind of different to work with. But I kind of like the challenge. Like a lot of my stuff is kind of working off of like mistakes or like challenges in the in the piece. So I like the challenge of like working with the raised letters or like framing it in the thing or trying to work with other elements to like, you know, bring out something different. Well, you have a pretty colorful... I don't know if I want to call it psychedelic, but uh, you have a pretty unique viewpoint when it comes to your art and you're talking about working in the mistakes. Can you share a little bit more about your process when you're creating an actual concept? Where do your ideas kind of flower from in terms of the mistakes and the final product? Yeah. Yeah. So I just think it brings like a more like genuine, better creation. You know what I mean? Because when you're like, set in with what you're doing i feel like the creativity kind of like stops like you're like i want to draw like an elephant and like that's it like i like nothing else so if i want to draw an elephant like i'll draw an elephant but like leave it open and maybe like swirl things around and kind of blend in other elements that are just popping in my head so i leave a lot of room for just improvising and just like in the moment like whatever's running through my mind honestly it sounds weird but it keeps it fun and like, I don't try and like create something interesting for people. So yeah, no, it's cool. As, as an improv actor myself, it's different, but I can kind of get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So it begs the question, what do you do when you're not painting to fan the flames of your creativity? Like, do you have writing or meditation, yoga, mm-hmm. mushrooms? Like what do you do to <laughs> kind of fan the flames of your creativity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, nah, a lot of people kind of, well, you know, like you said before, like the psychedelic feel, a lot of people associate like, you know, what I do, because like, let's be honest, it's very like surreal, wild, psychedelic, colorful. But honestly, I mean, I just kind of like really try to dial into like, I listen to a lot of music. So I'll just like put on headphones and like really just try and like disassociate and like be in the moment of creating, which I think really, you know, is the best way to do it. Because then you're, you're really like, you're not thinking outside influence. You're like strictly in the moment. But as far as like, I take a lot of walks around town. I live in the city in Philadelphia. So like, I'm kind of like in the mix. So I'll just like take a lap around town and just see like what all the craziness is and what people are doing. And you know, I like, you know, the whole like sticker scene, graffiti culture, the street art. Like I just like, there's just so much to view and just be like influenced by to the location I'm at that I just utilize that if I'm feeling like, I'm not really into it or like today's not the day like I want to draw but like I'm not really feeling it then I'll just try and like open my mind a little bit and just take a lap and see what else see what's going on outside my little space here. I love that. I love that you use your environment and you're inspired by just the world around you and you certainly are in the thick of things in Philly. You also talked about when you're actually working and creating, you have music playing. What do you listen to when you're creating? I listen to a lot of a lot of wild different things. Like my genres are up and down, but honestly, I, I'm the top two are probably like a lot of hip hop and like heavy metal. To be honest with you, like post hardcore metal scene, I'm I'm really into that. And then mixed with like hip hop, some sometimes instrumental, psychedelic rock, like so like I'm all over the place. But I find the two genres to be those two. I kind of like it's kind of calming in a sense, like a the loud chaotic noise it kind of like really drowns out everything else. And then like, I'm just really engaged. I've always been a hip hop guy. Like my brothers influenced me too with that. And just like my interests alone kind of like took me into that realm of like skateboarding is like a close association with hip hop, like graffiti is right there. So like everything kind of like molded together with like the influences kind of 
really just like blending all together, honestly. So music is like, I honestly don't think I could paint or draw if I didn't listen to music, to be honest with you. I think that's like a big driving factor. I, I just think it's it goes hand in hand with like any creative outlet, honestly. Yeah, I would agree with you. So I've been writing a novel and similar to what you're talking about, I use music to kind of quiet my mind and let whatever through that there is to come through. So I totally, it definitely is a little calmer and a little more peaceful than what (laughs) you're referring to. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like the note, like you would think all that extra noise would kind of add like distractions or like not being able to focus, but like in a weird way, it kind of makes you focus more. I don't know. It's like, and it can like bring inspiration in itself, like the lyrics you're listening to, the just whatever vibe you're creating. It all influences everything. It's all connected in my opinion. So it's it's a big driving factor. And that's big too with like what I do outside. So like I go to a lot of shows, local shows, a lot of concerts, try and be like, you know, active in that scene. And just, it's just a big inspiration in itself. Any like creative outlet I'm into. Yeah, absolutely. Now you're a trained artist you went to art school in philly can you share a little about how that has influenced you do you think that you would be the same artist without the school yeah that's a good question i've uh thought about that a lot over the years but yeah i went to university of the arts in philly i went to a community college before then but yeah i mean before then it was kind of like you know the typical what people do doodling and drawing on your own skateboarding was a huge influence and that's kind of why philly gravitated towards that too it's a really good skateboarding scene here too but for as far as like art school and everything like i think it's definitely beneficial for sure i, I definitely i wouldn't say I, don't, I regret it but i think there's i don't think it's the only way you know what i mean like it's i think a lot of people get caught up like I, I definitely did. Like after high school, I was like, no idea what I was doing. Like that just seemed like the path to go. Like that was just, you know what I mean? I, I didn't really know what was going on. And then I did that and then kind of figured out what I wanted to do from there. Um, but like art school, like I went, I was a painting and drawing major. And I think the best thing is, is the environment you get. Like, cause I think, I honestly think the information that you get from school that you, you can get it elsewhere. But I think the environment is like, really the benefit of school because like for me it was just like you would be paired up with someone else in a studio and just pretty much paint like until your slotted time and just like completely free form like you make your rules and then a teacher would come around and talk to you and it's like it's kind of a crazy concept you're in college and school it's like you have a direction but you don't I think I think um being going to art school and being around like-minded individuals that are trying to do similar things, but they're like different influences from outside, but you're all, you know, you're all painting and creating. I think that's the most beneficial thing. And being able to talk about your work too is important. Like really being able to dial in and like convey why you painted what you painted. Cause I like, you know, the common person doesn't really know a lot about it honestly like colors and imagery is like the first two thing like most people are like oh i love the colors and like oh it's an elephant like that's like i love elephants but uh, so like i think really like getting that knowledge and being like comfortable with like talking about what you created like your inner creation talking about it outer is like a difficult thing to do but i mean our schools are expensive too so it's like yeah there's that balance like is it worth it to be in debt and like pay these loans for the rest of my life or so i go i teeter tire it's a really good question though it's just like it's a tough one you know well what i'm hearing from what you said is it gave you structure which it sounds like you have that structure still Mm -hmm. because you talk about like i'm ready to work and so here's what i do to make sure i work whereas i think somebody who just sort of follows the path, they're just going to not work if they don't feel like it because nobody ever taught them the structure of working anyway. Very true. You know, especially in a creative, like, do you really have to feel creative to get started or can you do music and journal a little bit and meditate and walk around nature and be part of the culture? And like, you have very specific tools you use to get in a zone. And I think that you probably learned that because look, this is your time to paint. This is your time yeah, to draw. Go point. do it. That's a really good point. Yeah, because that that is true. You have a slot of time and, and you go somewhere to paint. It's like you're li- it's like a you work, you go somewhere to work. So I think that's a big part too. Like actually leaving the house, going like your destination is to go paint somewhere and like 
really dial into what you're doing. I think that's a good point. Structure is probably a very big thing I got out of it because I definitely, I probably do it without even realizing I'm doing it. Like I slot times, like I'm like, oh, after work, I'm going to paint. It's like, I'm already thinking like, setting away time to do what I want. You know what I mean? So that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. And the other thing I heard that you said by having to explain, almost justify your work, it probably created clarity for you around what you were doing, why you were doing it, why you chose to do it a certain way in a certain medium with a certain style Mm -hmm. by being expected to explain it to somebody else, you had to be able to verbalize it. And that means you had to understand it. And I think that if you're doing, if you're creating, maybe you don't really get why you just are. And so you understand that probably more deeply than someone who just follows their muse and never really has to explain why. So that could have added some additional layers and depth to your work that you're not even aware of. Yeah. And that exactly. That's like another benefit of being, you're talking about these things that you don't even realize in the moment, but like in like a panel of students and like teachers, they'll like totally expose something you'd even think about. And you're like, Oh, like that's where that's coming from. And I think like, especially for me, like I was a big, like, I still am like surreal abstraction guy. So a lot of that is kind of like figuring it out after you do it. You know what I mean? Like you do it and then analyze and figure out like, where's this coming from? Is there meaning in there? So yeah, I think that's definitely a big part of it for sure. It's, it's kind of crazy. Look at me. Works. I'm helping you justify all those student loans. Uh, I know I'm in, I'm in school <laughs> again here. <laughs> nah, it's good. It's great. It's, I uh, love it. I love it. Beneficial. Now, <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm curious. So I said, I'm, I'm writing this book and I'm probably like two thirds of the way done with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm really worried about what other people are going to think of it. Like when you put your work out there, I have a friend who is a, um, a novelist. She's put out a ton of stuff, self-published. And she posted on Facebook recently about the fact that you have to be willing to accept whatever response there is to your creativity because you're putting it out in the world. You can't control where it goes, who sees it and what their response to it is. Mm. What's your thought about that? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a big, that's a big part of it, honestly. Like if you're trying to pursue any career in like any creative career, honestly, something that you're creating and putting out into the masses to exactly interpret and judge, it's definitely a scary thing. Like I was, I've been doing this for a while now of like doing shows and markets, festivals, like any kind of gig to just like put yourself out there. And it's definitely, it can make or break a lot of people. Cause I know some people who create and do everything, but they're terrified to show their work or go outside just because of the judgment. And like, I don't know, that can really rattle you and just like shake you up. Like, you know what I mean? It can really like put something in your brain and make you not want to do it anymore, honestly. But for me, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty laid back, easy going. Like I'll, I'm pretty, I like talking to people too. So I kind of like the honesty, honestly, like when I'm out there, like I want to hear what people say. And like, I'm not afraid to like, I don't know, I guess I think going back to the art school thing that might have like thickened my skin a little bit too, of being like, because when they critique you in there, they, no one holds back. Like they're like disrespecting you almost to a certain point of like why you're doing it. They'll flip your painting upside down and be like, oh, this looks better like this. Like I've had that done to me, which is crazy. But I mean, looking back, like it's good because the general public is, is, is ruthless and they'll give you their honest opinion. But you need to hear that because you'll that's how you grow. That's how you like realize how your stuff's being interpreted. So like there's there's goods and bads from it, obviously. But I don't know if you're trying to do this, you just got to believe in what you're doing and that you're doing it for a reason. And you support and are confident in what you're doing and putting out there and like just react to the reactions. Honestly, like, you know, they're not going to ruin my day. They're just telling me what they think. So like, I don't really care. So (laughs) I take it lighthearted, but I want to hear it. You know, I want to hear that brutal honesty because you need sure. to, everyone needs to hear it well how has your art changed as a result of the feedback you've gotten over the years would you say that you do what you want to do anyway or have you been influenced by that feedback mm. yeah that's a good question too I would say I mean I, I feel like I still do what I want honestly like I still I feel like I'm sticking to my gun because like that's 
honestly, I, I try and paint and draw like what I like to paint and draw, like what keep gets me motivated and like the imagery that I like, honestly, that doesn't not to take away from like, you know, I love doing commissions and things that are completely outside of my comfort zone. But yeah, I think I'm definitely, I definitely try to make it a point to like, really stick to my guns and like do what I'm interested in what I'm influenced by like really not try and take that judgment and like completely change who I am like I think that that's problematic in a lot of senses like that can like completely derail you to creating something that you're not even like passionate about honestly but I say that to say there's there's money in that you know what I mean like I could paint like to the license plates, like they, they're taken very well. So like, if I just like sat down and painted license plates, I probably would do financially better <laughs> at like some of these shows and things, but like, I like doing them, but I like doing other stuff too. So it's like, you can't really take that too close to heart. Like I definitely like, you know, plant the seeds and like you, the, the shows really let you know the best feedback like it lets you know like what people gravitate towards the most but that shouldn't derail what you want to create you know what i mean that should be just like a little note to keep in mind but i don't know you should really listen to yourself and, and your your inner dialogue is really important i think yeah for sure and you know we're sort of skirting around the conversation of self-worth so i'll ask you the question directly how has self-worth played a role in your journey as an artist yeah i i think that's yeah directly related to what we were just saying like especially in a creative field like you gotta believe in yourself and have confidence in in doing what you're doing i think self-worth is directly related to confidence honestly like it takes a lot to set up you know a table or a tent and like put everything you're creating out there into like a vulnerable maybe hostile environment you have no idea who's walking through these streets or whatever so like I think it takes a lot to just like post up sit up and, and talk to the public about things you want to do and I think like as a person that can really like we were saying that can really like affect you negatively if you're like vulnerable and kind of like fragile and you don't really know what you're doing and like I don't know someone's work could like break you if they're like what are you doing? Like, I've seen this a thousand times. Like they really like lay into you. So I think that self-worth thing is just like sticking to your guns, honestly, believing in what you're doing, whatever it's doing, whatever you're doing. Like if you care about it and you're passionate about it, I think that is enough reasoning to do anything, to be honest with you. So I think that that self-worth is just like, you know, don't be influenced by other people's opinions on you. But I mean, it's definitely a struggle. Like I struggle with it too. I talk like I'm Mr. Hard Guy over here, not affected by what people say, but I'm affected too. But it's just like <clears throat> keeping it on the surface and like, this is just other people's opinions and really like having a core morals that like are important to you and just kind of like really like boil it back to that and just like ride that out. Cause that, that's what I've been doing with the self-worth thing. Cause it's like, you can get lost in, in any creative, anything you're doing, honestly, you just get lost in it and, and like, think, what is this worth it? it? Like, is this the right path? Like, am I spending my time wisely? But there's got to be a reason there. You know what I mean? There's got to be, I don't know, it's got, there's got to be something there to make you want to do this. So that's, I'm just kind of riding it out and kind of going off those like simple morals to me. And I just, uh, you know, believe in myself, honestly. Yeah, I think that's so important. I think that we can allow other people's opinions to impact us, but not own us. Because exactly. I think when we let them own us, that's when we become the victims of, you know, public opinion. <laughs> so where can we see your work? You, you're talking about doing shows and, and things like that. Where can people yeah. come and, and find you? Well, obviously on the social media outlets, I'm uh, Instagram at botanical underscore funk. That's kind of like the main source, honestly. Instagram's like, Everyone just seems to use that the most, in my opinion. I have an online shop website, botanicalfunk.com. And that's kind of like the alias that I'm pushing. It's just kind of, I like the name and it kind of sums up like what I'm into, honestly. And like the, the content I'm putting out, just it just seemed to work. So like a lot of organic, like plant-based kind of imagery mixed with like the funky, surreal, urban influences. So social media are those two. I have some stuff in a shop in Souderton called Art on the Hill. It's like a little like, really cool local gallery. I got some stuff in there. The lady's really nice. The shows are kind of sporadic. I do those 
I'm trying to do more of them because like I, I also have a full time job that pays my bills. So with the time that I have outside of that, any of like the Philly markets, I think there's some coming up like uh, punk rock flea markets, but any little DIY shows or like local scene, I'll, I'll, I'll do anything small to big. So but social media is like the big thing. Instagram, my website. Yeah, it seems like with Instagram, there's now a way for you to put yourself out there without having to be accepted into a gallery and shows. I I mean, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, that was how you got seen. If you weren't in a show, if you weren't in a gallery, nobody knew your stuff. And then I think it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And I think that there with the Instagram and and other mediums, it's so much easier to get your work out to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It almost seems like before then, like, like, how did they do it before then? You know what I mean? Because it's like, I don't know. You have to really like be out there physically putting in the time. And that's like kind of what the markets and like shows are. Or be super creative, like Banksy. <laughs> yeah. Or do something completely off the wall to be like, yeah. oh, God, to go yeah. viral in that sense. But yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Well, you mentioned that this is not your full time gig. You have a full time gig that pays your bills, mm-hmm. but yet you're still pursuing art. When we spoke, Previous to this, you said that you did learn a little bit about the business of the art scene in art school. Mm-hmm. Is it worth it? Like being an artist, putting yourself out there, doing this grind, like in addition to your full time job? Man. Yeah, that's the that's the question right there. I mean, I struggle. <laughs> that's an everyday struggle because uh, it's the balance is like it seems impossible at times. You know what I mean? Like. Because the cost of living is so high and then, you know, everyone's got different financial circumstances, but yeah, like to, it's just, you gotta be realistic with it too. Like these creative kind of paths that people take musicians, you know, authors, so be it. It's like, you kind of teeter totter with like the, well, essentially it is two full-time gigs. Like I feel like I have two full-time jobs, like, which is tough, but it's just, uh, I know I, I struggle with it all the time because it's like, you need your time. Your time is valuable to do what you want to do and create it. And you need that time to like advance your interests and like create avenues in that sense. But at the same time, you got to devote time to a job, a financial career that pays your bills and keeps you afloat because, you know, you hear the success stories all the time where people like, I'll just quit their job and like hit the road and like makes be successful. But like, I don't, you know, that's not really crazy realistic. Like that's like a few amount and like, I mean, that's definitely possible, but I don't know, as like a painter and like an illustrator, you gotta be realistic. Like I would love to quit my job and do this full time and like really see what, what can happen from it. But you, you know what I mean? That could really set you up for a bad spot, but like, I don't know, at the same time, I contradict myself all the time. Like you got to take risks to get where you got to go. So like, maybe that's a calculated risk, but I think it's worth it to get back to your question. I do like, cause especially if you're like just working a job just to get by, but you have other passions and interests, like you can't let those die. That's, that's a constant inner dialogue of mine. Yeah, sure. I mean, we all have those constant conversations that keep bubbling back to the surface. Yeah. I, I love your, your commitment to your passion. I mean, it's so clear to me. Now, do you have any artwork for our video friends that you can share? Do you have anything nearby that you can show uh, us? Yeah, I have to keep it in the license plate theme. I have the one that I have left here. So like I said, the license plates, they are probably like between that and like the broken skateboards, they kind of are the most popular. And like, I really like, I really like painting on them, honestly. Explain this to our audio audience and then yeah. they can find it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh this one's pretty cool. This one's super wild too. So it's got the, an old Pennsylvania license plate. And like I was saying, it's got like, you've got a friend in Pennsylvania. Like I, I think they should bring that stuff back. Like they're so much more unique. Like some of them say like the Keystone state or like have like cool little things, but, uh, but yeah, this one is obviously I'm a big sports guy too. So like any Philly sports, so Pennsylvania, I got the flyers mascot gritty on there with like, kind of like a octopus tentacle situation coming out of the middle and then like the keystone shape is part of the license plate so that's why i'm like yeah i see that now yeah like the license plate in itself brings like its own elements that you can incorporate 
and know what I want to put into it. So, but yeah, this one's pretty cool. It's just like, you know, kind of busting up like an old hockey player, the gritty yeah. tentacles thing. And, and everyone loves gritty in Philly. So it's like, uh, <laughs> it's an easy subject matter to kind of create off of, you know? Yeah. I think that was the first one I saw oh, on yeah. Instagram that had me connect with you. So it's definitely a very, very cool one. So it'll be easy to find. Just look for the octopus. You've got a friend in Pennsylvania's plate. If exactly. you want to see it close up on the, on the Instagram. Yeah. And that's on website too. Like my website's pretty much like whatever I create, I put on there. Instagram. I'm always like progress pictures, kind of like life around the studio kind of deal. But like I said, they, they're pretty popular, which I'm really grateful for. Like the feedback's been great. I would love to have like just a series of like 20 of them. But again, that comes back to having time to do it and like all this stuff. But yeah, there, there are tons of fun. I love, I uh, love doing it. That's awesome. So what's in the works for you? What's coming up in the time that you do have to dedicate on your art? What are you going to be working on in the near future? Uh, I'm working on a lot of new paintings, actually, but I kind of dabble between the both of like recycled surfaces and the traditional. So I actually have a few like traditional paintings I'm working on kind of bigger size. And I'm always trying to like dabble and kind of pick in the like kind of like the material goods, like kind of like a shirt. Like I got the shirt on right now bamboo guy so i eventually want to dabble into like apparel i'm a big sticker guy i'm always making stickers I just got into making pins which are really cool like enamel pins people love those and they're they're pretty fun too like there's the quality of those things is unbelievable but i'm just always trying to push and like find new fun things to paint on and like kind of break up the the norm here of just like seeing like a table of just like prints and you know, like it, it's just rinse and repeat kind of a lot out here, which not dissing anyone. Like I, I love to see it personally, but I've been painting on like cigar boxes. The broken skateboards is still a big thing. I think I might do like planners, like kind of incorporate like the botanical side more with like some pots and thing like, things like that. So I don't know, anything, it's a day-to-day -day thing. Whatever catches my eye or I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of cool to paint on and like something different. So it comes and goes, whatever the, whatever the day brings. Yeah, I love that. You're definitely fully immersed in the process. And like you said, you you follow what inspires you. But you also do commissioned work too, right? I do. Yeah, I love doing commissions. I'm, I'm pretty much like any art endeavor or like message someone, you know, throws out to me, I'll do like I've done like a lot of my stuff is surreal, kind of psychedelic base, but I can do like realistic portraits. Like I've done a lot of pet portraits, surprisingly, which is pretty funny and cool yeah, a lot of license plate commissions from like because i'm like obviously philly pa based like a lot of it's those plates but i've done a lot of like other states which is really cool yeah i'll do anything honestly typography digital work like it's just like anything that's associated with like that realm i'm into just to like get me out of what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> so because it's, you know, it's taxing the restaurant world, but it is what it is. Yeah. There's tons of people in it. So I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain, you know? Yeah. You could be grateful for it. It pays the bills. It has its yeah, place exactly. in your life. And like you said, the, the balance is really important. And it sounds like you yeah. maybe sometimes struggle with it, but that you work to keep that balance so that you can have the inspiration because if you're totally like squished down by stress and upset from oh yeah your job you'll never create so you yeah, have exactly. to be maintaining that in inner itself. peace <laughs> like that'll take like that'll make you not want to paint and draw or like that'll just yeah that'll take you in a direction that i don't i don't want to go in i don't think anyone should be should let that happen honestly but it's so easy to be like so in the, in what you are and just like lose track of what's going on. But uh, yeah, I love the commissions. I did a, a license plate commission for this. I don't know if they're still in business. I don't think they made it through COVID, but I did like license plate plates for them. So like they would make the food and put the food on the license plate. It was kind of like an apocalyptic, like themed restaurant. It was, it was in the city. That's so cool. Yeah. So it was like, you know, apocalyptic, you know, if you were out in the water, there's nothing to eat food off of, you grab a license plate and put it on there. So I did like 40 of them. I'll have to send you pictures, but they're, um, yeah. yeah, like that's this kind of gets back to like, I'll do any commissions, like anything, because that alone can like spark a new avenue or like someone coming to me with like a pet portrait could like be influenced for something else. You know what I mean? Like that I want to do down the road. So I really have like no limitations. Like I kind of take pride in being able to like 
do whatever, or at least like accepting the challenge of doing any content or any project. So I've done a lot of fun ones. So yeah, people hit me up for any fun, <laughs> fun and commission. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I have to say, I have so enjoyed learning about your process and your creative outlets. And I'm glad that the license plate thing brought us together. So I just really appreciate you being here. I'm going to have all the ways people can connect with you on your Instagram, your website, and anything else that we have that we can show off your work. So that'll all be in the show notes. So people should go check out all of this work that Ben does, all of his art. He's amazing. And it really, it it stays with you because it's so unique. So I love the work that you're doing and I appreciate you sharing it on my podcast. Yeah. Thank you for reaching out out of nowhere. It's like, this is awesome. I had no idea you were doing this. This is like a real unique podcast. This is awesome. So appreciate Ah, it. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So I always like to end with turning the tables and see, do you have a question for me that you'd like to ask? I see the uh, tapestry in the background, a little funky chameleon. Do you have any like art interests either? Is there any like an artistic side in you? Obviously you said you're writing a novel. Like what do you, what's the creative side of you here? I have a very musical family. So I grew up, you know, the song she could sing before she could talk, she could dance before she could walk. Mm. Is that uh, Fleetwood Mac? Yeah. yeah. So that was me with singing. I could... I was singing and harmonizing. I love doing the harmony parts. So that's my favorite. I don't sing too much anymore, but I definitely have always loved being able to to do that. I was in a 60s band when I worked in Manhattan uh, about 20 years ago. Wow. And uh, I've sung, you know, at weddings. And I was actually, I don't know if you can see the album here. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was from when I was a senior in high school. I was in Hicksville, Long Island, and my choir director was the choir director that said to Billy Joel, you know what, dude, you've got something here. You should go for it. So they stayed in in contact because that's where he went to high school. He didn't graduate from Hicksville, but that's where he went. And so my choir director was retiring that year, and he was asked to do the harmony, to write the harmony part for Leningrad from the Stormfront album. And he chose a, you know, group of us. And we went into Manhattan, into the studio. We hung out with Billy Joel and Mick Jones, and we laid down this harmony track. So that's the music signed by everybody that was there. So if you ever, if you own the album, go look at the credits, (laughs) members of the Hicksville High School Choir. That's me. That's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> a cool little like thing to be able to say, you know. Cool I mean? little thing to be able to say, yeah. <laughs> and the novel thing just sort of happened recently. I have these really, really vivid dreams. And I've always said, if I could remember these dreams, they would be epic, like multi-series <laughs> books or movies. Yeah. Celebrities would play them. I mean, they're just so vivid and detailed and the stories and characters are so well developed for my dreams you know that's funny yeah i can relate so i said if i could ever remember them yeah that i would i would be an amazing writer and so i i just kind of through a series of serendipitous events i decided to be open to it and so i'll wake up at like three four in the morning which is a really inspired time to create Mm. And I just started, if I would wake up, I would get up and I would write and see what happened. And the next thing I knew, I had like 150,000, maybe not quite that. It's like 140,000 words written down in no particular order, just the order it comes when I'm up at that time. I I did put it down a few months ago because I had some stuff happening in my family that I've been kind of like avoiding dealing with my emotions about. And if you're not dealing with your emotions, then you're not allowing your creativity either. Like, I feel like they come from the same so place. True. Absolutely. So if I'm shut down over here, I've also shut down over there. Don't Edwin let it pass in. you by. Get in. Don't That's let it awesome, pass you though. by. That's awesome. Boy, it's been amazing talking to you. I've really enjoyed it. We kind of went off the rails with the topic because you don't have a vanity plate, but I'm glad we did Yeah. because I love how you are bringing focus to license plates in a completely different way than people think and being part of the, I guess you could call it the license plate culture now with this podcast, I'm opened up to so many different ways that license plates show up, especially creatively. And um, yours is very, very cool. So thanks for being on today. 
Yeah, thank you so much. This was a ton of fun. I, I appreciate it. This was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. All right, have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, you too. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Trista's Plate Story Podcast, share it, or leave a review. If you would like to nominate a license plate to be featured in a future episode, or you have an interesting Plate Story news item to share with me, leave us a comment or visit platestory.com. That's P-L number eight story.com and give me all the details. This is Trista Polo wishing you well on the road to your next adventure.